Well, good morning, everyone. Somebody should uh, take credit for the sunshine today. It's a gorgeous day out. I'll take it. Jason, good. I'm glad. Thank you for arranging it. Uh, it's a brilliantly nice day out there. Good day to rake leaves, which actually is a nice segue to Mr. Roach coming up to talk to us about leaf pickup for today and what, what our schedule is and what we're asking residents to do. Good morning, Warner. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Good morning. Oh, uh, it's that time of year again. Time to get those leaves picked up, bagged up, or however, whatever you do with them. Got some uh, details here for you. At City of Lima uh, Public Works Department, we're gearing up for our pickup program. Um, this year is scheduled to start next week, the week of the 12th. Um, starting on the 12th, we're going to be doing the first, fourth, fifth, and sixth wards. And we ask everybody to rake the leaves in a pile to the curb lawn, okay? Um, not in the street. Uh, pick up in the second, third, and seventh ward will begin as the crews progress. And providing it doesn't snow, we'll do a second round, okay? Uh, if it snows, we have to stop and take care of the snow, plow snow. But uh, So as, the, as you've seen, they already start to fall with all the wind and rain we've had. Uh, small accumulations, they can be bagged um, and placed out front with the regular trash pickup. Um, the leaf bags are available to the city of Lima residents at no cost. And they can be obtained through uh, 900 South College Street down on a central building. Um, or the building and collection office located on 424 North Central Avenue. Okay, they're free. Uh, prior to the start of the pickup, large amounts of tree and leaf debris um, can be taken to the Lima Compost Facility uh, located at 1227 East Hanthorne Road. Okay. Residents, they need to show a copy of your, their water bill to be able to get the leaf bags and then access the compost facility. Okay, that's all you need to get your bags. Um, so I've got a few helpful hints when, when the, wrecking your leaves. And make sure you do it, on, wreck them to the curb lawn so we can pick them up with our equipment. Um, we'll wreck them from the curb lawns to the street when it's time to pick the leaves up. Um, if they were if they wrecked in the street, then you know kids could go in and play in them. The cars can't see them, um, which is a a huge hazard. Um, uh, vehicles, if they put them in the street, vehicles can break them down. You know, ride over and break them down. Then it's harder for us to pick them up. So it's just directly through the curb lawn. That's what we ask. Um, we're asking residents to refrain from piling the leaves on the curb lawn unless your your ward is scheduled to be picked up. If we didn't say, you know, if, it, if you're not until the second round, then then wait. Wait until we uh, uh, we say we're going to pick them up. And we'll, we'll keep you updated. Weekly updates will be provided through the media um, so the residents can anticipate the arrival of the city crews. So with that, any questions? So we start when? We start Monday. Start Monday. Yes. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. So everybody, will, I think the uh, forecast is for some reasonable weather the next several days. Everybody will have the opportunity to uh, work in their yards, hopefully over the weekend, and get prepared for the start of leaf pickup season. Um, we have some guests this morning from the Lima City Schools, and I want to invite up uh, Chrissy Hood, who's the teacher of marketing uh, at Lima Senior High School, and she has some students that she would like to introduce. So students, come on up. Good morning. I'm very excited to introduce and share four um, students that made history last week. We had the Ohio DECA Career Development Conference or the Fall Leadership Conference down in Columbus last Tuesday. And we have three of the seven total state officers on the state um, DECA level, which is um, record history making for us. We've had two at one point but we've certainly never had three. 
And we also had another individual I'll introduce in a second that placed third, just a couple points away from being a fourth state officer. So what these positions entail, we have two gentlemen, Delante Manley and Quinn um, Gable, who both had to go through a screening process to be one of four candidates that were competing to be an elected position. And I'll have them each kind of explain what they're doing. And then they had to campaign and give a speech and be elected by voting delegates all over the state of Ohio. And they both won by very large margins and did a wonderful job. Then we have two young ladies that competed in the parliamentary law competition and the public relations competition. And those competitions started our district level with over 100 plus students across the state trying to become that one first place winner for those positions. So. Um, Tierra Spivey is the um, young lady here who got third place, and I'll kind of let her talk about, she's, she's a little disappointed in that finish, but her third place finish is tremendous. And that um, from our district, she competed and qualified, and then there was nearly 40 students competing at the state for that position, and she got third. Um, Cora Bicknell then got first place in the public relations competition, competing at our district level, and then um, upsetting some people that really thought that there was kind of a front runner in that race and she upset them and got first and so she's an officer and so Melissa Donald is my colleague she's back teaching while I got to come here today but we are all extremely proud of these individuals and it is a huge accomplishment just to even have one state officer so the fact that we have three out of the seven and almost four is is um, something that really really is a, a source of pride for all of Lima Senior and our school district. So I'm gonna let each of them kind of briefly tell you what their position is and now the big roles that they have to fill as officers on the state level. So I'll give you Delante first. Thank you. Um, my position, I am the Executive Vice President of Leadership Development. So um, my job for the state officer team, I go to different district conferences and I find ways to um, develop leadership development. So um, DECA prepares emerging young leaders for leadership development, so my job is to take on that task to let all of Ohio DECA find ways that we can all become strong, determined leaders. Um, like Mrs. Hood said, we all went to, um, we had to deliver a speech for the delegates. It was a pretty exciting moment, and we don't get these opportunities anywhere else, so this is like one of the best experiences of my life, you know, being caught on stage. It was like pretty, it was all pretty emotional, so um, it was like pretty fun. It was like the best experience, so. Um, that's pretty much what I do in my position, um, and I'm really excited to be elected as Vice President of Leadership Development. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. So my name is Tierra Spivey, and I competed for the parliamentary law competition. And what a parliamentary does is they make sure that meetings are run properly and that everything goes smoothly. And what entailed for this competition, we first had to compete at the district level where I had to say a self-introduction, I had to take a test, and then I also had to complete an interview where I answered questions about parliamentary law. I placed third at districts, and then I moved on to state where we went through the same process. And as Ms. Hood said, I did get third place, which was really disappointing, but I am really grateful for this experience, and I learned so much through this, so I'm really appreciative. Thank you. What year of school? What did you say? What year of school are you? I'm a senior. You're a senior. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, just like Delante and Mrs. Hood said, uh, my name is Quinn Gable and I'm the uh, Executive Vice President of Leadership Development for Ohio DECA. Uh, my scenario to get where I was at is very similar to what Delante went through. Um, well, all four of us had to win elected spots in our own chapter, the Lima Senior DECA chapter. Um, from there on, me and Delante both went through a screening process where we went to Columbus um, and they basically kind of see, they basically wanted to see if we were eligible and capable of leading Ohio DECA. Um, and so from then on, we went to Columbus on, I think I believe it was last Monday and Tuesday we were in Columbus um, and we, were run, we ran for state office. We both ran against three other people each for our categories, um, which is very intimidating thing, especially as a high schooler. Um, but uh, my, my job as Vice President of Community Outreach is to keep DECA as a community and to promote community outreach ideas. Um, Ohio DECA, many different chapters in Ohio DECA do have community service projects. Uh, that they'll take to the district, state, and national level. And so throughout uh, the course of this next year, I'm hoping to kind of reach out to the different chapters throughout Ohio um, to come up with com community service ideas, ones that they can use uh, just to be more active in their own communities, but to hopefully that they can use as projects and hopefully become nationally recognized. So 
just as I'm sure all three of us are, all four of us are, I'm very excited for this year and I'm excited for what we can achieve. Okay, my name's Cora Bicknell. I am Ohio DECA's public relations officer. What public relations does is create a feel good positive image of Ohio DECA that we already have, but we want to boost it up even more. We want to recognize every single chapter across Ohio in the 12 districts because every chapter is bringing greatness and developing great students out. Also, I run the newsletters, I run the website, I basically expose the behind the scenes with us because I want to create a connection between all of the leaders and the audience. That's what I truly believe in. So what I had to do was take a, take a test, I had to do an interview, a self-introduction, I, I had to beat a lot of people and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think I would be able to, I just, kept praying. I'm just like, you know, whatever happens, happens. And the most wonderful thing happened. I placed first by a point and a half, which is nuts. It's, it's a dream come true, like the rest of us say. And um, still ha the feeling still hasn't kicked in yet that I actually won something so great. So, I mean, hopefully I get, I get to do a good job. So, yeah. That's Thank perfect. you. Well, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. And, they could stand in for me any time. <laughs> they all speak so well. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, also this morning, uh, we have uh, Sergeant Hillard here from the Long Police Department with uh, uh, and community police officers uh, here to talk about an upcoming event. So, Sergeant. Thank you, Mayor. And I pretty much uh, said what I was going to say about these kids. They speak so well. It's, it's good to see. Very good to see. Not a note among them. They, yeah. just, they just got yeah. it right off. And I got my notes in front of me. Um, Lima Police Department, um, we've been invited by uh, Fresh and Faded uh, barbershop at 227 South Main, uh, November 17th, a Saturday from 11 to 1 for a coffee with a cop. Um, we would like to invite the uh, community to come out, um, have some interaction with us, and bring some business to the barbershop and um, just to promote a good uh, atmosphere of some give and take conversations to see what's going on um, in the community and things that we can help with and um, any issues that we can address. But, what time? Yeah, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday the 17th, at, once again at Fresh and Faded, 227 South May. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, lastly, this morning, uh, City Engineer Kirk Niemeyer is here with an update on our uh, paving activities. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, give an update on our resurfacing project for this year. We are, the weather is having an impact. Um, the leaves are having an impact, so definitely don't don't rake your leaves in the yard or the street if uh, your street uh, your street's going to be resurfaced. But <clears throat> I want to give a, a schedule of what we're going to uh, resurface the remainder of the week. Uh, those streets uh, that will be on the next. Two days are Columbia Drive, Ritchie Drive, uh, Lane Avenue, and uh, Ashwood. We've already started on Columbia, so we'll finish up there. And then either this weekend, depending on, I mean, we're supposed to get snow on Friday. So uh, it just depends on what the weather's going to do. We have to have rising temperatures, and we have to have uh, clean streets. So McDonald, which is our last uh, major, um, our longest street in our resurfacing project, will most likely uh, take place next Monday or Tuesday. So also we have the Kibbe Street uh, rail uh, grade crossing improvements at uh, 
the Indiana Ohio Railroad will take place. The road crossing will be closed the 15th through the 19th uh, while the INO uh, makes repairs to the track and the ties and the asphalt at that location. So the detour uh, will either be 4th Street to the south or Bell Fountain and Elm Street to the north. So plan for that. Thank you. The INO had uh, previously scheduled this work. They moved materials in and then uh, were diverted. So it's good to have them back on schedule and, and getting that done yet this season. Um, I believe that's all that we have for today. So we will break down for interviews. And thank you all for your attention. <laughs>